Okay, it's January, Monday, January 25th. We'll go ahead and get our technology meeting started. Those in attendance, please um, mention your name, Kevin Strobel. Scott Matz. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, All right. Uh, under the budget prep category, uh, we're finally <coughs> bringing in for a uh, ultimate conclusion uh, as far as our internet service providers. So uh, this is the process we kicked off last fall, um, bidding out internally our internet connection uh, in conjunction with the uh, consortium we currently participate in with the Berks County Intermediate Unit. Um, and ultimately, we had four providers uh, bid uh, for a connection coming into our high school, uh, three providers uh, bid uh, for the middle school, and then late uh, on Friday, we received pricing from the PCIU for the consortium. So uh, that's ultimately what I'm going to review here uh, tonight. And then you know, we have obviously a recommendation for you as far as that goes. So as we look at uh, the pricing. So up on the screen, uh, First County RMIM, uh, Regional Wide Area Network is what that stands for. And that is uh, what we currently participate in. And the pricing we received on Friday uh, is a monthly cost of $2,856.08. Uh, as I mentioned, we bid this <coughs> now separately, pulling it in-house, so uh, we would be working directly with the vendors rather than uh, through the county consortium. <coughs> And what we found uh, is uh, a pre-E-rate cost of $27.10. Uh, the IU cost does factor in E-rate, so that cost is not going to go down any further. However, our in-house cost uh, will uh, ultimately be halved by uh, about 50%, bringing that into a monthly cost of $13.55. Uh, so you can see, obviously, as we're looking at uh, anticipated savings, a yearly savings of $18,000, uh, or over three years, which is what we would engage in uh, contractually with the providers of about 54,000. Um, actually, those numbers are slightly higher. Um, the in-house connection would be a total of two gig uh, gigabytes of internet. Uh, the Berks County connection was 1.5. Uh, if we were to bump it up to make it an apples to apples comparison, it'd be about 21,000 yearly savings or 63,000 uh, year over year. Uh, so. Obviously, with that uh, you know, level of savings, our recommendation would be to continue uh, with the in-house model. Uh, that allows us to get uh, not only slightly more internet for a cheaper price, but it also addresses uh, the redundancy issues uh, that we've been chasing after. So uh, should a uh, furry animal decide to wreak havoc on one of our connections, we would have an additional connection uh, to fall back on in the district. Um, and, you know, on a given day when everything's operating normally, again, we'll have that capacity um, as we normally do. So, is, it, is it split like a gig and a gig? That's exactly okay. what it is. Yeah, and it's two different providers, so uh, from a redundancy and disaster recovery perspective, they'll follow uh, two different paths, so we're not, um, you know, the provider has an issue, we're not taking two buildings down to be isolated just from separate uh, systems as well. Um, <coughs> with one connection coming out from the Esther area, the other connection originating uh, from down in Trooper area, so we're coming, basically 422 is the corridor, but we're coming from different ends of that corridor as well, uh, mostly just from, a, uh, again, that redundancy and integrity of our, our network uh, perspective. So um, that would be our recommendation to continue uh, pursuing the in-house uh, model, and uh, you know, while we've received good service from the consortium, ultimately um, just, I think, really strategically our location in the district made us, uh, you know, really uh, keen for yielding some savings just from our location on all 422 compared to some of the other districts. Uh, that was uh, really ended up being quite attractive to us compared to uh, doing what we've been doing the last several years. So if you're in agreement, we'll engage um, you know, with official talks with those two providers uh, and ultimately then bring you uh, for approval the, uh, the separate agreements on that, on that front. Yeah, I don't think there's even a question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Plus the savings will probably buy some of your equipment for the splitter. Well, that's, yeah, exactly, exactly. <coughs> we were quite, um, we were, we were, honestly, we were quite surprised how aggressive the, the providers came um, into the district. One of one of the providers is a, um, the company providing actually the connection from the IU here, so they did some legwork five years ago. I think that's how they were able to be so aggressive uh, for us, but, um, you know, like I said, moving forward, I think this is the, uh, the, obvious, the obvious choice for us. Now, is that 
full bid we're waiting to have to bring that up in the voting meeting coming up here? Or do you not just no, continue not, to no, that? That would be next month. Uh, <coughs> but we'll target that one. Yeah. All right. Going further down the list, uh, our student information system. Uh, just a brief note for the online registration. That kicked off uh, this month, the implementation for that. So that's what will allow us to uh, ultimately ditch these paper packets. Uh, so we had a kickoff meeting uh, with Infinite Campus on that front. We've sent over our existing paper documents so they can uh, begin to be converted to a, a digital process. Um, ultimately, that will be a process that parents can initiate um, from home at their own convenience. They can save the file, um, start to stop as they please. Uh, one of the neat things is um, as parents registering, let's say they're registering a kindergartner, but they have maybe a, a two or three year old uh, at home, they can actually register that child at the same time and it'll just sit uh, the student will sit in a pending status uh, until they come of age for kindergarten. So we can actually uh, collect some of that information in advance. As soon as someone moves into the district, they don't have to wait till they're ready for kindergarten. They can uh, pre register so it helps with that. Uh, uh, some of the, the challenges we have always with the census information and making sure we're hitting all of our families. Now the families can be uh, proactive and, and register for us even before uh, that kindergarten day. And obviously it translates beyond just kindergarten registration. Our new student registration for any grade level uh, will also be able to go through that process. So uh, it should be an improved point of service for our families and also just from a data entry perspective. Uh, no more trying to decipher handwriting or uh, type things into the system. It will automatically just migrate into uh, campus at the start of that project. Um, the only other <coughs> note is really our next steps is we're starting to schedule a training for our, our staff in-house. Um, beyond that, nothing uh, substantial on that front. Any questions on that one? Yeah, Mr. Um, the Limerick, um, the Limerick cards that we have to do, are they going to be able to be handled through an online? You know, I thought that the idea of cutting it on the card was that the, uh, the principal has the ability to take those in case we do lose power in the case of uh, I know it's been there since the 80s and nothing like <laughs> no, uh, um, so the short answer is yes. Um, point of fact, even with um, our current system, we do PDF copies as well for that purpose. Right. There, we haven't had to evacuate or whatever else. So some of those processes, yes, we would still maintain because. So, the, so the, yeah, so at the building level, you know, if that information is entered um, electronically, then we will create some sort of. Yep. Yeah. Document yeah. For, correct. For, yeah. For the, Typically, we generate those monthly. Just uh, again, you know, servers go down, networks go down, so we do that. They exist even for uh, just okay. computer issues. As, as much as we'd like to believe, it's always up. It always <laughs> is. So, um, so yes, yeah, we'll, we'll still be able to handle that. Any other questions? All right. On the telecom side of things, uh, really, this will probably be. My last update on that front at this point, we're just finishing up converting over random small lines like a uh, fax line, elevator lines, that sort of thing. We've been running solid with the main uh, transition since November uh, without any issues. Uh, so that project uh, you know, really has been successful. We've been pleased with the, the quality of service. So uh, it's just buttoning up uh, these one off analog lines that still existed in the, uh, in the buildings. Any questions on that one? All right. Under the digital learning uh, heading, so we have a discussion uh, tonight about our, our student information system, not student information system, our learning management system, uh, and you know, really some pass forward on that front. So another uh, uh, presentation really for you on the screen, and really what's driving this is discussion we've had um, internally. You know, how do we uh, support our digital learning moving forward? How do we keep that momentum going from all the positive changes we've been able to make? Uh, from a technology and instructional perspective this year. So uh, to that end, really our approach when we were doing this was, what do we want our student experience to be? And then we worked backwards from there uh, to where we're at currently. <coughs> and we identified some key points uh, along uh, that evaluation. So we want to see um, our student information system, you know, it should be um, delivering the content in the browser. So we don't want the students to have to switch around uh, to five or six different applications if uh, it at all can be avoided. Uh, we obviously want to uh, continue with collaborative activities and growing that aspect of things. 
and we definitely uh, want it to be a consistent experience uh, for our students. So um, as they go through our system, uh, we don't want to have technology become one of the stumbling blocks for them as things constantly change. Uh, they should be able to grow through the platform. And that's really uh, in pursuit of providing an equitable uh, classroom experience that's accessible to all learners. So in pursuit of that, we evaluated five learning management systems. So our current system uh, is Schoology. Uh, it's obviously uh, been in district. We're coming up on year, uh, be completing year five of that uh, in the district. And then we added in uh, four additional uh, platforms, uh, Blackboard, Canvas, Google Classroom, and Seesaw. Um, all of those are established uh, vendors in the arena uh, covering different um, uh, grade levels or, or, or student age groups, uh, but all are established uh, in the industry. Ultimately, after doing that initial review, uh, we narrowed it down to our current system, Schoology, uh, Blackboard, and Canvas. And uh, basically what we did is engage in a series of discussions with them, demonstrations, uh, learning more about functionality, uh, learning about the navigation experience for the students and, and uh, what, uh, what functionality would they have, what functionality would our teachers have, and then obviously uh, you know, what, what is the cost to deliver uh, on their various platforms. And through that evaluation process, uh, we ultimately uh, landed on the, you know, really the topic of discussion for here tonight, um, and that is the recommendation uh, that we evaluate and move forward with uh, a different learning management system uh, for the next uh, phase of our digital learning experience, and that would be Blackboard. So uh, why are we recommending that? So one of the big reasons uh, is accessibility uh, for all of our learners. So accessibility uh, meaning things like a text reader to read uh, the content on their screen if they're visually impaired. <coughs> Similarly, uh, color contrast, uh, you know, the screen uh, is colorblind or has uh, issues identifying uh, various colors in the system. Uh, translation, as we have uh, English language learners in the district, uh, assisting them uh, accessing content in other languages other than English. We want to have ADA compliance, so if an image is on the screen, uh, their device should be able to read out a description um, of that image. It's uh, officially return, uh, referred to as alternative uh, text for an image, so uh, it's a brief description of whatever the image is on the screen that they can't visually see. And we want it to be better equipped for lesson delivery, so uh, that's really focusing on organization, uh, grouping things not just like a file system, uh, which is largely what Schoology does right now. It's just a folder structure with you know, folder upon folder upon folder. Uh, and there's no uh, real logical order uh, to the information, no great grouping mechanism for it. And we also uh, want to be able to automate the release. So uh, we want to be able to allow materials to be released either on a schedule, maybe at a certain date and time. Uh, it could be released based on performance. If they achieve, uh, let's say, a 90% or better on an assessment, we're going to release these materials. Uh, or it could just be purely sequential. So after you complete assignment one, now assignment two is available to you. And after you complete that, assignment three, and so on. So to have a variety of uh, means uh, to do that in an automated fashion, so if a student is participating asynchronously, uh, they're not waiting for a physical intervention from uh, a person to release their content to them. They can continue moving down their path uh, unimpeded. And finally, uh, the system just overall has a much more scaled down, uh, simplified user experience. Um, again, making it easier to navigate for all of our learners, uh, regardless of uh, ability. So additionally, some advantages, just to take advantage of existing um, changes that have occurred since we implemented Schoology. So uh, Blackboard Learning Management System ties in with uh, other Blackboard products. So <coughs> in this particular case, <coughs> Uh, parent notification, parent contact. It ties into that system rather than being a separate system as SchoolG currently is. It integrates with our uh, Danny Moon mobile app, which currently uh, largely functions to push out um, information, news, uh, that sort of thing, uh, but class assignments, uh, information of that nature can fold into uh, that app as well, uh, negating the need for uh, an additional app on individuals' phones or iPads if they don't uh, wish to have it. 
it has the ability to download content to the device. So uh, that becomes key from a wireless slash internet perspective. Uh, students could download content in that platform while they're here in school. Uh, so if they know they're uh, going to a location without internet, without good Wi-Fi, uh, they could access some of that content from their device. Now, uh, that's not 100% <coughs> across the board. You know, there's still third-party apps that they wouldn't be able to ingest that content from. Uh, but things, you know, uh, assignments, rubrics, um, uh, activities, documents that are actually in the Blackboard uh, environment could be stored locally on the device. Uh, so giving some resiliency, really, to, to the system, uh, regardless of the internet connection uh, status. It has a product called Safe Assign. So that, um, if you're familiar with Turnitin, uh, it's a plagiarism pre uh, prevention tool. So we currently use Turnitin uh, in the high school. Uh, this would be an equivalent uh, replacement for it built into the system. So allowing <coughs> us, again, uh, to really fold in some capabilities rather than having uh, a variety of different platforms that we have to navigate to. Uh, that um, you know, English department history submission uh, immediately will be scanned rather than having to be uh, routed through Save, or uh, turn it in and then separately upload it into the learning management system. And then last but not least is something called Ally, and that's a, a branded uh, product within the Blackboard environment. Um, so as we were talking about on the last slide, uh, the accessibility functionality, uh, this is not only, uh, they don't have the, the functionality not only built in, uh, but they actively monitor it. So if content is uploaded to the platform uh, that does not, um, adhere to ADA compliance, uh, it will alert us. Uh, it will also provide suggestions <coughs> and guide um, our users through the best way to resolve it. So, and uh, you know, as we talk about building on momentum, I mean, you know, we've talked about in the past, uh, you know, leveraging uh, you know, the situation we find us in for positive change. Um, you know, this is a gap that we, we identified really uh, in our current system. Uh, SchoolG lacks a lot of this functionality, um, and had we really not found ourselves in you know, this pandemic and the opportunity to grow with our digital learning, uh, that may have gone unnoticed. So um, this component here really, I think, is very powerful for us uh, in ensuring uh, that we're able to engage all of our learners, uh, not just those that uh, you know, can engage what is presented exactly to them on the screen. But this will uh, open up opportunities for some populations that are, quite frankly, underserved uh, by the current system. So. Uh, that, that's a, a huge benefit to us, and that, again, builds off of the existing um, capabilities we have with our public website. So if you remember about two years ago, that was one of our big drivers was ADA compliance. This is utilizing that same product uh, just for our learning management system now. Um, and all of this that we've discussed, uh, the, the, you know, the really great thing uh, is we can do it in a cost-neutral uh, perspective. It, it comes in at the same price. Um, as SchoolG, actually about $100 less a year, uh, minus implementation costs. There would be year one implementation costs, but moving forward from there, we can gain additional ability uh, without a substantial impact uh, to the budget from a, uh, a line item perspective. So I know that was a lot. Um, I'll obviously take questions on you know, how we went down this path and any other information you were, uh, were wondering. I don't have any questions. It sounds very, they've done a very thorough job, and so, I mean, at the end of the day, you guys are using it, and so, I mean, from, it just sounds like there's a lot of additional benefits over schoology, and that's really what we're to head down to. Anybody? <coughs> uh, I, I don't have any questions. Anybody else have any questions?
focus that's similar to the Infinite Campus rollout as far as just general information that we're pushing out as well as having available um, at any time on, on our site. Hi. Um, so, if, uh, okay, so there's been a lot of change in the last like year or so. I don't know if you've noticed. And um, so, so if it weren't for the fact that um, what you're talking about um, makes a significant stride forward um, in our accessibility, I would ask if we could wait a year. Um, but I would, I would assume that since um, accessibility is such a big part of what you're saying Schoology lacks, that Blackboard has, that's, that doesn't make sense. And I'm fine with that. Um, what I did want to know is, did the research that you, that you did into the different uh, platforms, um, was it just go? Was it just going to the companies? Was it going to also schools that use these? This, I'm just if someone's trying to sell us something, mm -hmm. you know, if they could be telling us that you know we have all we have all these accessibility features that are super easy to use and intuitive, yeah. and maybe they're not because maybe that's happened to us sometimes in the past. Oh. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so. So um, I just wanted to know what that what that research looked like to get us here. Yeah. So um, yeah, obviously direct company uh, interaction. I mean, that, that was the first yeah, step. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, we did uh, engage um, not only other districts, uh, but in the as far as the three that we narrowed it down to: school, G Canvas, Blackboard. Um, we also <coughs> were personal users of the system. So um, you know, I, I've actually done online classes in the Blackboard and Canvas environment. Um, so we um, have personal experience from ease of use. And then also, each platform was also uh, willing to give us actual live sites in it. So it wasn't just a, uh, we promised it's going to do this. We actually were able to kick the tires and go through and see, does it actually do it? So um, during the evaluation process, we actually built out a live course separate in Schoology, built out that same course um, in Blackboard to have a comparison of how we did it in one platform, what was that ease of use in the other platform as well, so it wasn't just going off of uh, what they said would, would happen. We actually were able to see uh, that process. And, and the folks that from, out, from our end that were looking at that, was that just our IT folks? Uh, or was it also like special ed and... Um, and uh, uh, Learning coach. Instructional learning coach. Okay. Yep, so yeah, we evaluated internally, and now we are in the process also of engaging um, faculty at large as well. And because especially if we're talking about accessibility issues, yeah. I, I think that um, the input from Ashley's team would be would be part of that discussion. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, okay. That's all I wanted to ask. That's yeah. Satisfying. You know, and to, and to your point, too, like, as far as a lot of change, that was a central conversation in all of us. So that, I mean, that is... Um, uh, very well received and really the decision we landed on because we uh, have had a lot of change but more change to come. No, no, no. I, that, that's, that's where I was saying that, that uh, you know, the, um, what you've discovered, it sounded like the, the need is there enough that it, you know, even if it is more change, yeah. we should probably just go ahead and bite the bullet. Um, but I just want to know what that Decision process look like that's all. Yep. I think one of the other uh, things is when we were when we were putting this out is we continue down the road of uh, provide our own synchronous in-house in option for our students uh, migrating away from the, our third party vendors is we build these courses um, that's built it on the platform we're going to utilize instead of building on the current platform that's not as functional as this one and have to rebuild it again. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think it, I think good it makes sense to go ahead. It's a good question, too. So. That's, that's, that's a good question. Anything else? Yeah. Actually, how long would it take to implement that? So we are meeting Thursday discussing as far as training um, implementation schedules and what that looks like. Um, the 
benefit to coming from an existing learning management system is there's content already generated in the system. Uh, so a lot of this is more of a, uh, a move over. You're not necessarily generating it fresh. <coughs> the other component is, because we are moving over to a new system, you know, we'll be focused less on the uh, how-to components of it, uh, but more so working with our teachers to make sure uh, that we're designing the course effectively for online instruction. So that'll be more so our, our focus is um, the actual layouts of the course and the organizational components of it. The, uh, the technical training of it, it, it it's very similar. Once you've worked in one LMS, a lot of the concepts transition over, so it'll be more so uh, focused on that student experience and making sure content is logically uh, organized and not just uh, sporadically, you know, scattershot in there and that sort of thing. So that's going to be you know, our task at hand, um, and that'll be um, you know we'll be looking for a you know, really intensive process there and uh, working with our teachers to develop true online courses. What's the time frame? Yeah, I just want to jump yeah. in with this fact that this year we met with you know yeah. all that was quite a bit. And we have right now scheduled next year about four and a half days of uh, training opportunity based on what's going on. His team designs out to uh, for implementation and procedures throughout the year. So. <clears throat> Is that for the students? Is that for the students and the teachers or just the teachers? Just the teachers. Okay. The kids have been brought on years ago. We've, we've been doing this for well, well, the first two days of the school year is the time we integrate kid, students into these, these gotcha. opportunities. But the training for teachers will happen in August and be ongoing. Uh, once a month um, in, in, the, in the fall, September, October, and November. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, that, any other topics for anybody to bring up? That concludes our meeting. Thank you.